But praise the Lord. Jesus loves you. Welcome to Yeshua's Wellsprings Ministry Bible Study, weekly Bible study that we do have. We are grateful that you are able to come here today. We love each and every one of you. And man, we have been going over a great series so far. And I believe it's only going to only get better because God is in control. Amen. So, like I said, we've been going over this series the past few weeks of Battle Buddies. But before we get into this message, let's get over the formality so we don't interrupt the Spirit of God speaking us to us today. All right. First and foremost, we're on three social media platforms that you can catch the messages on. You can catch us on YouTube, Facebook, and Spotify. If you're on YouTube, you can find a link to our Facebook group page down in the link below. And you're also going to find down the link below in our Facebook page to find our YouTube page down below. So it'll help us all be able to come together and be able to be able to catch things that we download in the future and keep updated on what's going on here today. Now, we all the reason why we're also on Spotify, just because just in case you know someone can't catch us live or they're traveling and they want to listen to a message, you, you want to get caught up and stuff, you can find it all there too. Last sec, lastly, if you want to help us anyway, share the videos. That's all we ask. I just share the videos, help the message get out. Um, don't we don't want to hinder what the Spirit of God wants to do. So if there's me the message is out there for someone who needs to hear the message, we want to make sure they get to it. Um, but, for, but that's all for the formalities, the messages. Uh, let's get into the message today. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity to come. And to seek your favor in our lives. Let your spirit speak to us as we go forth in this study of battle buddies. Teach us how we are to sharpen each other. And bless each and every person that is watching and listening to this message. We pray that you will keep them safe and strengthen them in your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we are a big we are in the midst of a series of battle buddies. This week we are going to be on how we are sharpeners to our battle buddies. How we are supposed to strengthen, how we make them sharper. Okay, as Our main focus is going to be Proverbs 27, 17 where iron sharpens iron, so shall another man sharpen the countenance of another man. Okay, So therefore, it's the same thing with our brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. How do we do that? Um, what are you doing to help sharpen your brothers and sisters? What are you doing? What are we supposed to be doing? Because there are several different ways we can sharpen our brother. We talked about a couple of them. That is also part of this. You know, it's just a continua continuation of what we've been studying. A kind of a focus point this week is going to be on our sharpener. The first week, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how we are supposed to strengthen. Last week, we talked about being watchmen. No word for being watchmen is holding your brothers accountable. Accountable. Okay, holding each other accountable. But there's other ways. There's being faithful and truthful. Uh, there is uh, mentoring and there's fellowship and there's studying. These are the ways we can keep each other strengthened. We can sharpen each other. So let's go ahead and get under our message into the scripture verse. Let's go to Proverbs 27, 17. I want to make sure we're understanding the concept of how iron sharpens iron because as someone sword fights, as iron swords go together, we rub the blades together, it will sharpen the other blade. Okay, so it's the same thing as when we're sparring with, like the two people are sparring. As they spar with each other, guess what happens? They not just strengthening that one person not getting stronger but the other person is getting better as well that's the reason why we spar the part another word for sparring is studying together we're studying each other's craft what is our craft the word of god knowing what god has to say to us and to speak to us 
Amen. So this is the things that we are looking for into the Word of God today. Now, as as we said, go to Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. It says, "Iron sharpens iron, so men, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends." What's another word for countenance? His face, what he, the way he looks. Okay. Uh, so, as we as you read in like November in Numbers chapter six, let's go there real quick. I want I want to see I want to understand that what we're talking about with countenance. Okay. We're in Numbers chapter 6. Then we'll get into the meat. Okay. It says, start with verse 24. It says, The Lord will bless you and he will keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and he will be gracious to you. The Lord will lift up his countenance to you and he will establish shalom for you. His countenance. Lift up his countenance. Lift up his being. Lift up his face towards you. Because you saw uh, before, he will make his face shine, to shine upon you, which his face, he's going to look upon you, and he's going to bring up, the Lord will bring up his countenance. What is his countenance? What is, what is the main thing of his countenance? His word, his grace, his love, the things that are, makes who he is. So who are you in Christ? That's who we're, that's who we're talking about. We're, we're wanting to talk about who we are in Christ. So when we talk about who we are in Christ, it's not just talking about just ourselves, but with ourselves, with other people. Think about it. I want you to think about it. How are you sharpening your brothers and sisters? How are you behaving? How are you interacting with your brothers and sisters? Sometimes we don't, we don't see these things, so therefore we don't acknowledge these things. And a lot of times we get so fearful that we don't know how to behave in front of our friends because we're afraid to lose our friendship. The thing is, we should be following our Lord and Savior first and foremost. And then our first and foremost, if our Lord and Savior is telling us to hold our brothers accountable, hold our brothers, be faithful to our friends, be truthful to our friends, and be there for our friends, and we're not doing that, then are we dulling our friends? Our, our, Friendships? Are we dulling, dulling our battle buddies? Are we allowing them to fall in their sins and into into the things that they that is surrounding them? Okay, because sometimes even in our lives, I just want to I want to point this out. Even in your life, think about all the times where you felt isolated and you had that person come to you. But what if that person didn't come to you? What if that person, you weren't able to approach that person and ask for prayer and that person wasn't able to pray to you? Well, pray, not pray to you, pray for you in your stead. Okay, part of being battle buddies, part of being sharpening each other is be able to stand in the gap. That's part of strengthening. That's part of being faithful. That's part of being mental. That's studying together, holding each other accountable. Okay. Because as you, you know that this is the weakness of your brother, brother or sister, you intercept, you get in that gap to where, hey, wake up. You're not supposed to be doing this. Hey, don't be here. Like, like for, for example, you know your brother has a strong addiction to alcohol or strong addiction to uh, pornography. And you know that they're in, in a... In the, process of getting to the situation where they're not supposed to be in that will cause them to go into that situation you say hey you step in the back that's it you're not supposed to be here this is not what god wants you to do and you remind them part of the way we remind them is we we say scriptures to each other we say what the word of god is saying to you hey and sometimes because a lot of times you say oh, it's so hard and it is hard because since our spirit and flesh are constantly at war, we're constantly fighting with one another, with ourselves. When I talk about with one another, I'm also talking about with our brothers and sisters. Because as we fight with ourselves, we also tend to fight with our brothers and sisters, even though they have the best interest at heart for us. So part of being that other part of being that battle buddy is also being willing to take it. Not getting mad. At the, because they are willing to stand in the gap and hold us accountable for what we're what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to be doing, 
but also willing to accept that they are being faithful and truthful to us. Because a true friend will tell you the truth no matter how much it hurts. Because in the end, if someone is lying to you and not willing to say anything, because if you do not say anything, it's the same thing as lying. Okay? Because you know the truth. And if you're not willing to speak the truth to someone, you're not willing to speak to your brothers and sisters the truth. Not even just your brothers and sisters in the Lord, but your brothers and sisters in your neighborhood. Okay? Like, if you're not willing to go up to your neighbor and say, hey, Jesus loves you, that he died for you, then are you not lying to them? Are you not being truthful to that person because you know the truth, but you're not willing to share the truth to them? So therefore, you're not willing to let them know how to inherit eternal life because they're in the dark? There's a lot of people, there's a lot of people who don't even know what the Word of God says because they've never experienced, they've never been put into that situation where they can hear the Word of God. There's a lot of people nowadays that don't even know who Jesus Christ is. There's a lot. They hear the name, but they don't know what they've done for them. There's a lot of people who don't even know who Noah is. Know the story of Noah, or the, the story of Mo Moses, or Abraham. They hear it, but they don't understand it. They don't know who those people are. But, how the, but the thing is, those are the people that God put in the Bible so that we can learn from their examples of how to walk in faith how to trust in the Lord, and how to do what He has called us to do without wavering. And part of doing what He called us to do without wavering is being there for our brothers and sisters. Amen? Go with me to James 1. James chapter 1. We're going to start with verse 2. We're going to read from 2 through 5. Part of sharpening each other is what God allows us to go through so that when we go through it, we, we experience certain things that when someone else goes through, we can say, hey, I'm there for you. This is this is how I dealt with it. This is those scripture verses that say, say, for example, there's scripture verses that God has given you through a trial that you were going through, and they helped you and kept you going, and kept you keep the perseverance and endurance up to where you keep going through and trusting God. So therefore, you can also share with your brothers and sisters when they go through that same situation. Okay, if pray to God that they don't, we pray to God they don't have to go through that situation. But you never know in life how God is going to try to strengthen someone. Okay, let's go. Let's start with verse two. Consider it all joy, my brothers, when various trials light upon you, knowing that the Proving of your faith produces endurance. Proving of your faith. Hey, proving that you trust in the Lord, that He is going to deliver you from all circumstances. Trust in, trust in the Lord that you have the power to overcome the mountain. Overcome your trials. Because everybody goes through trials. I'm asking, because life is a trial. Okay? Because there's a lot of up and downs. It's like a roller coaster ride. Okay? There's sometimes you're going through your lows and there's a straight high points. And there's a lot of times we don't even realize how low we get until we hit the brick wall. And when we hit the brick wall, because we aren't wearing our safety belt, because we ain't trusting the Lord to keep us safe, our safety belt, our harness that, that keep us from smacking our heads, smacking our bodies around to where our, and I'm talking about our spiritual mind and our spiritual heart and our spiritual that we feel defeated at times. And that's where our brothers come in to sharpen us and say, hey, I see that you're going through this and I went through the same thing. I may not, underst I may not understand the pain that you are going through because sometimes the pain intensity can be different than your pain intensity. Okay? Because you may only go on through a little bit but God's taken through them a whole lot more because it takes them a while to understand where they're at in life. Understand this. God is not there to tempt us. God will not tempt you, but he will allow you to be tested. The reason why he allows us to go through trials and temptations and be tested is so that we would have a what? Testimony. What is a testimony? Something that you can tell a brother or sister that God has delivered you from. And because they are going through that trial or 
trial that they are going through, you can tell them how God delivered you from that trial. Amen? That's exactly how it's supposed to be. And if you're not willing to tell them, you're not willing to study with them, you're not willing to share those scriptures with them, if you're not willing to sharpen them and hold them accountable, and if you're not willing to strengthen them, then what kind of friend are you? Technically, you're not a friend, you're an enemy, because all an enemy will try to hinder your brother and sisters. And if you're not willing to tell them the truth and be faithful to them, then you are an enemy, and you're trying to hinder your friends. You're trying to hinder your brother and sister. Are you willing to tell the truth to them? Are you willing to speak to them the truth of who God is, what He has done in your life, and share those testimonies so that they can be uplifted as part of a testimony, showing how God delivered you, uplifts someone else, saying, hey, if God can deliver him, he can deliver me. The thing is, he already has. That's the whole thing. He already has given us the victory, so therefore he has already delivered us from our trials and temptations. That's the whole thing. That's what we're trying to get to everybody. That's what the Lord is trying to get us everybody to believe, saying, I'm already victorious over this, so I do not have to worry about this. This is only temporal. I don't, I've had an eternal life with Jesus Christ, my Lord, and I do not have to worry about what Satan is bringing to me. Because what Satan can bring to me is nothing compared to what God has already done for me. That's the truth. Continue. And the endurance must attain its purpose so that you would be mature and complete and not falling short in any way. So what we talk about, not falling short, not stopping before, before you hit that road, before you hit that barrier. You keep going. Sometimes we have to go through barriers and we have to break through them. There's a lot of walls that in our lives that that is holding us, that's trying to hold us down. A lot of chains, barriers, chains that God has broken for us that we must bust through and get out of that situation. But we do not because we want to continue. How can I put this? How can I say, listen to the words? We want to continue, listen, to doubt. We want to continue to live in fear. But God doesn't want us to live in fear. He wants us to live in faith. And what does faith give us? Faith gives us the hope. The hope that we believe in that Jesus Christ has already given us a victory. And we don't have to worry about those chains anymore. And we can walk. We don't even have to run anymore. We don't have to flee because Satan's fleeing from the blood of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that upon our lives, and we proclaim that we have the power in Jesus' name that we can over, that we can and already have overcome Satan's attack. The reason why Satan attacks you is because you keep allowing him to. We give him more power than what he are than what he deserves, because he has no power over you except for what you give him. Satan has no power over you unless of what you give him. Where are the areas in your life as in your brother? Uh, I'm talking to you as a brother. I'm talking to you as a brother in the Lord. Where in your life are you dull at? That you need to be sharpened on. That you need to trust God on. That you continue to fall short of? Is it financial? Is it physical? Is it spiritual? Is it mental? All four stages, God will supply every need according to His riches and glorious presence. I'm not going to say He's going to make you rich, rich in finances. I'm not going to, but He's going to provide what you need at that moment so that you either feed yourself or pay your bills where you succeed in life and not stress or worry about what is around you and whether you're going to make it to this day or not. Because we're not supposed to worry about what tomorrow brings, but what today is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Let's continue to read. But if anyone of you lacks wisdom, lacks wisdom, this is all part of being a sharpener, he must continue to ask from God. So we ask God to show us wisdom. And there's times where when we ask God to show us wisdom, he sends a brother. Or a sister. I'm going to tell you this right now. A woman can 
have a word of God, word from God, just as much as a man did. Because you got to remember, God told Mary Magdalene to tell his brothers that he is risen. That is the whole thing about this. God told his brothers, told Mary Magdalene to go tell his brothers, okay, that Jesus Christ is risen. That he was risen to come meet him in Galilee. Okay? So, because you never know. Your brothers or sisters, hey, one of your closest sisters, if you are married, is your wife. One of your closest friends. Now, sometimes your the Lord will tell your wife something that will strengthen you in the long run. There's many times my wife has hold me, held me accountable. The way I behaved, the way I talked. Okay? Just because they, they are female does not mean God can't use them. Okay? I want you to understand that. Let's continue. The one who gives generously without reproach and will be given to him. But he must always ask in faith without doubting. So when you're asking God that he, asking God for wisdom, asking God for strength, do not doubt that he's going to give it to you. There's a lot of times in our lives, and I've done it before, I've done it too, that we ask God for strengthening, and yet he gives us, yet we take it back and say, oh, he ain't going to do it, he ain't going to do it. What kind of faith is that? If you're asking God for something and you are a child of God, he's already given it to you. Because what did he say to the eldest son? They said, you've always been with me. You've been with me from the beginning. And what mine is yours. All you had to do is get it. Come get it. We're coming to get wisdom from God. So therefore, because we come to get wisdom from God, he's given us the word. He's given us the Bible, the scriptures. And he's given us brothers and sisters that we can go and console with that could speak to help us understand, that may be, may be able to understand some something about the word that we may not understand. And God's going to use them, this, use, use them with his spirit to speak to us about what he is saying here. What he has what message for us. That's why we got pastors. That's why we got teachers. That's why we got prophets and apostles and evangelists. We, and each one of us has a piece of that inside of us to where we are able to strengthen each other where we are able to sharpen each other. Okay? That's all talking about sparring with each other. Studying the Word of God is like sparring. Because I got my sword, you've got your sword, and we're, we're taking the Word back and forth, and we're helping each other, you know? We're, I'm speaking the Word, you're speaking the Word, we're strengthening each other in the Lord. And that's what it is for us to sharpening each other as study. Okay. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'll show you a little bit more of this. Because if we're studying together, what does studying do? What does studying? When, we, when we're studying with each other, right? What are we doing? When we're studying the Word of God, it's the same thing that we're doing with each other. It says, all scripture is God inspired and useful for teaching, for reproof, restoration, for training in righteousness. We're, so what we're doing, we're teaching each other, we're reproofing each other, we restore each other with the word of God. Because God uses the word of God to restore each other, every one of us, and we help train each other in righteousness to know what God is, to know that we got the righteousness of God upon us. Because as it says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, He who knew no sin took our sins so that we could be clothed with His righteousness. It means he, took our, he was clothed in our sin so we could be clothed in His righteousness. What is His righteousness? His blood. When, we, when He covered us with His blood, we were, He was covering us with His righteousness, with His life. So we can live in Him. Okay? Continue. Okay? So that man of God will be able to meet all demands since he has been equipped perfectly for every good work. 
Every good works. What's part of a good work? Showing love to one another. What is love to one another? Being able to be truthful and faithful to each other, to hold each other accountable. See, everything that we're talking about is going to revolve around everything that I said what sharpening is. Okay? Let's continue. I am charging you, chapter 4, starting with verse 1. I am charging you before God and Messiah Yeshua that you, that one, the one who is going to judge the living and the dead at his appearance and in his, king, his kingdom, you must now preach the word. You must now be ready in season, out of season. You must now correct. You must now rebuke. You must now encourage with great patience and every kind of instructions. For there will, will be a time when sound teaching will not be listened to, but they will heap up teachings according to their own desires in themselves. But their ears are itching to hear. Look at, look at what we're saying here. Look at what we're saying here. What the Word of God is saying here. What, we're, what I'm trying to tell you here is that God has put us in a situation where we are able to study together. We're able to bring the Word together. The way I can, not Me as a brother can t come to you, give you the Word of God, show you what the Word of God is saying about how we're to sharpen each other as bottle bodies. I can tell you many a times when in my life, and there's people, even on our on our Facebook group page, can tell you there's many a times where I needed them to strengthen me and, me, and they came to me for strengthening. There's many a times. But we were there for each other. We're all going to go through up these, these up and downs. But what did it say? What did it say? You must now preach the word must be ready in season, out of season. Because any given time, any given time, we must be ready to not just speak a word to strangers, but speak the word to each other. That is truth. That is the most truth that you will ever hear. Because seasons come and go. The Word of God remains forever. And the Word of God is the truth, which is Jesus Christ. The Word became flesh, remember? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh. The Word was with, was with God, the Word was God. That is the scripture verse that everybody remembers, right? John 1.1. 1, 1. Because we have this season, we have a season of doubt. We have a season of fearfulness. We have a season of anxiety. We have a brother over here who sees it. He comes and tells us, hey, that's ministering, that's teaching. And when he sees, and a brother or sister sees one of their brothers or sisters stumbling or walking in the way that is not of God, what they need to do, they need to come and say, hey, that is not right. That's rebuking, that's holding each other accountable. Okay? These are the things that we're supposed to be doing. Remember? Go with me to 1 Samuel 23. Again, we're going to go back to look at Jonathan and David. Here in 1 Samuel, we see how Jonathan, remember what we talked about last week with Jonathan and David, about how Jonathan was not, as a battle buddy, was not going to allow, he was being his watchman, he was being someone who was carrying who cared deeply for his friend, that no harm would come to him, that he was even willing to stand against his family to protect his brother. It says, First Samuel chapter 23, starting verse 16, it says, And Jonathan, Saul's son, got up and went to David in the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said to him, Do not be in awe. The hand of Saul, my father, will not find you. You will be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. And that also Saul my father knows. And they made a covenant before the Lord, and David stayed in the wood, and Jonathan went into his house, to his house, went to his house. So what did what happened here? Went to David in the wood and strengthened his hand in God. He encouraged him. He was there for him. He told him, I'm here for you. God has put me here for you. There's many times we cross 
across many brethren's paths. And there's times where we walk together. That's the time that God put us together there at that moment to strengthen each other. Remember what Ecclesiastes says, one by himself can easily overtake them. But there's, if you add another person, they can overcome. But a strand of three together is not easily broken. Remember. Remember that. Another way, another spot you can go look at this is Second Samuel, chapter ten. The second Samuel, Second Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter ten. Start with verse eight. It says, "And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entrance of the gate." And the Syrians of Zoba and Rehob, and the people of Tob and Maaka, were by themselves in the field. When Job saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind, he chose from all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai, his brother. So he could put them in array against the children of Alma. And he said, If the Syrians are too strong for me, and you will help me. But the children of Ammon are too strong for you. Then I shall come and help you. So they strengthened each other. They gave each other courage. He said, hey, don't worry about it. Hey, I got your back. You get, you have my back. I got your back. Okay? No matter what happens. If they start overcoming you, I'll come back and get you. I'll come back and so be your support. But if they're coming against me, hey, I need, I'll need your help over here. So what happened? Be strong. So they were strong. Let us show ourselves strong for our people, for the cities of our, for the cities of our God, and the Lord do that which seems good to Him. And because of this, the Syrians fled. And when the Syrians fled, Ammon saw the soldiers of Ammon saw that, and they fled as well. So they had a victory. So we come together so we can have victory in the battles. We strengthen each other so we don't get, feel defeated, but we can be overcomers. I think we're going to stop there today for this week because there's a lot more to come. We're probably going to continue this next week. All right, um, sharpeners, uh, being sharpeners for with each other about mentoring and stuff like that. Uh, we're, we're going to just going to continue. We're just going to continue on the battle, buddies. And we're going to continue studying about what God has, is doing for us. Okay? So, let's go ahead and close in prayer. But before I do this, I want, you to ask, I want to ask you something. Do you need strengthening? Do you need to go to your one true strength? You want Jesus Christ as that author and finisher of your faith? The one has already given you the victory so that you don't have to fear at all. I want to give you this opportunity to accept Jesus Christ in the person of the Lord and Savior because He is the only way. He is the only salvation. He is the grace of God given to us. He is our salvation. He is our eternal life. There is no other way to the Father but through Him. He loved you so much that He came and died for you while you were yet sinners. This is the truth. Me being a brother to you. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or if you wander off and you want to come back, say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I'm a sinner needing of your grace, needing of your salvation. I accept you, Lord Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior. And I have the victory in you, I believe in you, Lord, Jesus, that you died, that you were buried, but you rose again on the third day and you are seated at the right hand of the Father. I accept you into my life. Forgive me for all that I have done against you. In Jesus Christ's name, I do pray. Amen. And if you accepted those, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or have come back to you, the kingdom. We are grateful. We are want to celebrate with you. Just email me at Yeshua Wellspring 
at gmail.com. We will love to get in touch with you. We will love to celebrate you and help keep you going and keep you strong in the Lord. We thank you for every, we thank everybody right now for coming and joining us today as we talk about battle buddies. Let's go ahead and close in prayer and, our, and we'll go and meet next week. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to hear your word about how we're supposed to be sharpeners to our brothers and sisters. We know where there's a lot more that you want to cover with us, but Lord, we just want you to be able to be number one in our lives. We thank you for helping us to understand that we need to be faithful and truthful to our battle buddies. Because you were faithful and truthful to us. That you fulfilled every promise that you made given us to give to us. Lord, bless those who are listening. Keep them safe and strengthen them. I pray that you will provide everything that they need. I stand firm on that. That there will be no want in them. In Jesus Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Go with God. God bless you. God loves you. And so do I. I will see you next week.